Reverse cowgirl is illegal in the state of Alabama. No one turns their back on family. I guess you'll have to stick to Frogger. Do you have a tramp stamp, Jonah? <laughs> How long do you do things for people until it exhausts you to the point that you said, I won't do anything what? for you if you ever under tough circumstances because you continue to offer me that energy. My grandfather said, if it rattled like a snake, if it slid like a snake, it's a snake. Don't You ain't got to get bit to realize it's a snake. Damn, that shit's real. One time I went to dinner with this basketball team that was in the championship. One of the players took a really like good liking to me, I guess. He takes me back to his hotel room and we don't even have sex. He just makes me eat his ass. What? And then he comes, which is great. So he has to leave in the morning. He says, you can sleep over with me. That's awesome. That's great. I sleep over with him. And then um, he wakes up in the morning. He's gonna leave. He's like, you can like check out as an until later like you can use the hotel room enjoy yourself do room service whatever you want i go to the bathroom and i turn on the light i look in the mirror he gave me fucking pink eye like my eye was huge and red <laughs> it was not good and then the next day they won the championship well based on my previous experience i thought she was gonna say that she had sex with the entire basketball team I don't know if this is better, probably not, but there's something up with the girls now. They'll actually ask you if if uh, you're down for them to eat your ass, and you're like, bitch, you're fucking crazy. Hell fucking no. I'm, you know, they need to stop the planet. I'm ready to get off. Can you come sit in That's crazy. <laughs> Try to pet him. No, no, they have over got the big head. Big gun over there. <laughs> Fuck you! Damn, you gotta be a sick fuck to celebrate getting the divorce like that. Man, it was like the worst day of my fucking life. I don't even know why. But uh, gotta love her to see her burn when she don't get the money, man. These chicks are fucking the devil reincarnated. I wouldn't marry one. I wouldn't marry no one. No one now. Good morning, guys. I just want to say fuck you to Leonard because he keeps saying I'm gay. I'm not fucking gay. My farts only smell like wiener because I have my underwear on backwards, bitch. Watch this. Watch this. You ready? Baggy. Boom. <laughs> Your girl ever says that she wants to go to Miami, bro. That's the nail in the coffin. That's the death of the relationship. If you let her go to Miami, bro, you give away all your power. I live in Miami, so I'll tell you guys better than anybody. I've been on the yacht parties. I've been to all the clubs. I know what's going on. I've seen women cheat on their man in Miami. Why does your girl need to go there? Why does your girl need to go on girls' trips with only girls to places where they're going to be on yachts? They're going to be in nightlife. There's no real reason, man. So, like, why is your girl not hanging out with you? Why are you not invited? Why are you not going? I mean, it's pretty obvious to me. Like, your girl wants to go out and have fun and wear a big for sale sign around her neck while you're at the crib holding down the family holding down the finances there's no excuses for it life is all about reading between the lines and shit is never really straightforward this is so easy to see it, i mean a blind man could see it am i right when she takes off 
she wants to go to these places with all her girlfriends. You already know what's going on. And if you had any question, they go on the internet and talk about what they're doing all the time now. Go watch some more episodes of this and you'll see them plenty. Hell yeah, somebody thinks fast. Half these motherfuckers would have ran that shit into the wall and totaled the fucking thing. Way to go. If you're fucking happy and you motherfucking know what clap your motherfucking hands. If you're fucking happy and you motherfucking know what clap your motherfucking hands. If you're fucking happy and you motherfucking know what you really motherfucking want to motherfucking show it. If you're motherfucking happy and you motherfucking know what clap your motherfucking hands. Her fiercest look gave this man zero threat. Hey, put a little bit more oregano up on there. Yeah, player. That's it. Hit it with a little uh, Parmesan cheese next. Hold on. Girl on that damn dope, ain't it? Oh, Lord, she did. Oh, Lord. Somebody call 911. We need the ambulance down here. Girl done fell out on my damn sandwich. Where y'all manage at, somebody? I'm hungry as hell. Now, if I ain't got but a 15 minute lunch break, come over here, that motherfucker and fell out on my damn sandwich. Someone slipped some fanny in the roast beef. Watch out. How long do you think it'll take him to notice her? Oh, they're not, she's not coming up. Come on. Twisting your butthole hairs into braids all by yourself, handsome? That's a two-person job. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Biggest breakthroughs that I had from a, from a mental perspective was actually defining emotions for what they are operationally. So sadness comes from a lack of options or rather a lack of perceived options. And that's why it feels like hopelessness because you don't know what to do. But when I realized that sadness meant that I didn't know what to do, it meant that another way that I could define sadness was ignorance. And that is solvable. And so whenever I feel sad now, you know it's been my trigger to immediately think, what do I not know? What option do I not see? Like, so if you feel sad, it just means that you need to go learn more. And that you can do. And then all of a sudden, the learning more becomes the option and they don't need to feel sad anymore. Hi, cutie. I have a surprise for you. Have a nice day. I was at the Bugatti dinner. Everyone else there was either daddy's money or oil money. They had no respect for anything. To me, it was a massive deal. You can be a working class man and sit down with a cup of tea at the end of the day, and you'll enjoy that cup of tea more than this oil billionaire will enjoy his $5 million car. If you're in a car traveling at 100 miles an hour, it doesn't feel fast. But when you're accelerating to 100, it feels fast. That's how life works. If you don't respect something, you can't value anything. If you don't value anything, you can't be happy. This is sort of a lesson I had latched onto probably about like seven or eight years ago. And I was born in the middle class and I really struggled a lot to get to the upper classes, as I guess I'd describe it. But once I got here, I realized that the journey was everything and that the reason why a lot of the rich people or people that are born into the money aren't happy is because as a man, you, it's hard to have pride in yourself if you didn't earn the thing that you have. So if your dad buys you a Ferrari, you have it, but you don't have a lot of pride in it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to go through anything. It didn't really mean that much to you. So the fact that we're born in like the lower class or middle class and get to climb that ladder and be somebody and become somebody and overcome problems and become a real man gives us an opportunity to have purpose and pride in ourselves. And it makes it so much sweeter. And he's, he's exactly right. I can enjoy a cup of tea and I really can sit down and enjoy it. And I enjoy the little things. And I know what it feels like to be in a 200,000 mile Honda and have to drive it for years. And it just makes driving these Audis and stuff like that so much sweeter. So if you feel like you're born to lower class and it's a burden to you, it's really an opportunity and it's gonna be that much sweeter when you finally get what you've always wanted. Bro, you all right? Hey. Yeah, right? Yeah.
Cheesecake Factory? Yeah. You thought it was cool to take me to the Cheesecake Factory. What's wrong with cheesecake? Nothing. It's saying you have a budget, but it's cool. That's what it's giving. I thought you had motion. Come on. So tell me about yourself. Uh, I normally don't eat at the Cheesecake Factory type shit. So. Is this going to be a problem? No, nah, I just wish you would have told me. I would have dressed down or something like that, but it's cool. So what, what do you normally get here? Uh, I don't know. It's like a lot of things. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Their brown bread is bomb. Um, their pasta is good. Not you giving me a sales pitch. So what made you DM me? I mean, you look good. Aww. And I like the way you carry yourself. Aww. And I knew you like that bread. <laughs> How many times is it? I'm trying to bulk up and get bigger. Oh, you don't have to do nothing. You look good just the way you are. Oh, look at this dream. <laughs> you appreciate that. Oh, I got good. it. Yeah. Hold on, let me get a picture first. I thought you didn't like this place. Girl, I'm not tagging this location. Be for real. <laughs> the food look good, though. I had such a good time with you. Oh, I love that for you. That's what's up. So when can we do this again? I'm gonna let you know. You know, I'm a busy man, but I got you though. I'm gonna call okay, you. Well, give me some sugar. All right, bet. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm gonna hit you though. My DMs are closed. I'm not going on dates anymore. These women are out of control, bro. Man, where'd she take you on a date at? Bro, she took me to Cheesecake Factory like I'm not a bad nigga. Okay, mastro me, please. Oh, uh, man, she out of pocket, bro. But how was the food? I ain't never ate there. I mean, me neither, but I mean, it was cool. I'm full off the bread. I gotta keep it real. I love the Cheesecake Factory. The stuffed mushrooms, the buffalo blast, the turkey avocado bacon. Let's go. If you are 30 and over and you're telling women who are 30 <laughs> that they're old and over the hill, what kind of girls are you going for? 20 year olds. Because 20 year olds look better than 30 year olds. Duh. I guarantee that you weren't saying this whenever you were 20. Gotta date them 18 to 27 because after 30, they like them washed up as fuck. And if they're 40, they're 10 years from being a grandma. Fuck that. A lot of these women be like, I know my value. Value is what? You're just like every other chick out here. I've seen a thousand of you. You're selfish. You're entitled. You're sneaky. You're manipulative. What is your value? I have seen a thousand of you. All right, y'all. appreciate you getting into the end. Let's see what I got for you today. All right, guys. Let me tell you a little story about this right here, right? That's a pallet strapper. And this is how business works. It takes time to figure out the tricks. I learned from an old timer to use this thing differently, to use it flipped over and to use this piece right here with your hand and try to hold it up. And man, it was such a struggle. It's hard to get them tight. This thing's banjo string tight right now, right? But he, that's the way he told me how to do it. And he'd been doing it for like 30 years. So I didn't know no better. Well, we parted ways and what I used to do is find a piece of wood and I'd wedge the tip of it on that and then it would hold it back way better. But it was always a glaring thing to me. Like, what the fuck is that for? Like, why why do they have the hand, this little hook on this metal thing? And I always knew in the back of my mind something was up with that. So I'm almost embarrassed to say it took me like two years to figure out to do this drop the opposite direction that he had taught me because he used to tell me to go under here and up and around. But now you have to go up and around and then under. And I finally wedged it right there. And like I said, I'm embarrassed to say it took me two years to figure it out probably, but that's business. It takes time to figure out the little tricks and no one's gonna tell you like, how do you Google this? How do you figure this out? It's very hard to figure out. There's no one to tell you. There's no YouTube video about it really. So, well, it's not terribly hard to figure out. It's pretty fucking simple, isn't it? But that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Business, it takes time to figure out all the little tricks. and. Well, that's the simplest trick in the book. I don't know, the, the sandblasting tricks are really hard. How to make you run right, how to strip wood real good, stuff like that, so. Anyways, there's that tool. What's that for? Fucking duh, you fucking dumbass. Two years, that shit's stupid. That's hella funny. That's literally what it is. That's pretty fucking funny. All right, guys, I just wanted to share that with you. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, we are gonna see you on the next one.